Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Closing with Corey podcast, episode number 10. When I started this podcast out, I thought to myself, and I, I've even kind of talked through it on a couple of other episodes where I had no idea where this was going to go. I had no idea what kind of information I was going to be drawn to and, and connected to and what people wanted to even really hear me talk about. I did know that when I got to episode number 10, I wanted to at least try out and have my first guest on the podcast. I've thought about this since day one, that it only made sense to me to bring on the person who got me started in the world of real estate. He goes by the name of Jay Gumnitz. I've known him for going on almost, I guess, 10 years now, developed a great friendship. I always take away and extract some great information and some great motivation every single time that him and I uh, get, you know, get on a phone call and, and, and talk a little bit. So I thought it was going to be awesome to at least be able to sit down, catch up with him a little bit. You know, This is going to be a great one for you to listen to all the way through. So um, again, I hope you guys enjoy. This is episode number 10 with Jay Gumnitz. Obviously, thank you, number one, for taking the time, Mr. Jay Gumnitz. Yes, sir. If, um, I, I've been doing this podcast for a little bit, and I said to myself that episode number 10, I wanted to have my first guest on the podcast. And I thought to myself, I'm like, who better to have than the guy who basically got me into real estate, which is obviously yourself. Um, but before we go into anything, I obviously, I got to give you your accolades real quick. If you guys don't know who this man is, it's New Jersey's Remax number one individual agent, top 1% Remax worldwide, top 20 ranked U.S. Remax agent, top 18 in the U.S. for 2022 out of 125,000 agents, featured on HGTV's House Hunters Remax Central's number one ranked individual agent since 2016 and the Circle of Excellence recipient since 2013. So... Damn, you read off my signature on my email. I, I looked at it. I said, <laughs> between your email, between the Zilla, between everything, I was like, there's too much stuff to write down. But I just think that it's important because you're a humble person, you know? So I, I wanted to at least set the stage to where people can obviously look up and stuff. But I mean, there's, right. there's in, in my eyes, it's, you're one of the best that is, is doing what you're doing. Thank you. Um, and I think that this conversation is good. And I think, too, because conversations like this, Obviously, I'll be honest with you, are going to help me out tremendously, Um, maybe even for you, like talking about certain things. But then for people that listen to it, like whether it's a lender, whether it's like a buyer, a seller, friends, family, Mm -hmm. um, regardless, every time I talk to you, I learn something. So I'm like, let me get you on 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 a podcast so then people can listen to it and go through everything. So I kind of wanted to start out just talking about how you got into real estate briefly and like what year that was and kind of what your mindset was getting into it. Right. So, you know, as you know, we were doing the whole DJ thing, right? So this was probably back, I want to say, 2012 or so, Yeah. where, you know, my wife actually got into real estate first. So she was a realtor working with some of the teams out here. Okay. And she was kind of like, you know what, Jay, you might want to consider this because I was doing, I was in finance doing like the Wall Street thing and it it really wasn't for me. You know, I was sitting behind a desk all day and I'm like, I feel like I can offer more to the world. So I was like, let me try it. Yeah, yeah. that That was Back in 2012. Okay. So 2012, you got into it. I think, I don't remember what year it was, but all I remember was that we were, well, you were DJing and emceeing a wedding and I was doing the production for you and you were DJing probably for about 200 people. And then you had your second laptop (laughs) open and you were doing a home search. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, what are you, what are you doing? You got to be careful because some of my brides that I helped with the (laughs) wedding might be listening. And they're like, wait, were you rocking my wedding or were you writing offers? Well, that's why too. I was like, before I even mention the venue that we were at, I'll keep it very, very broad. But I was just like, what's, what's going on? There may have been a few times where, you know, I had, look, real estate is all about timing, right? Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't say, oh, I'll I'll get you that offer tomorrow. You got to submit it tonight. So whether it's during main course or cocktail hour, if I had to hit an offer real quick. Right. But again, it, that, that just made me think like, wow, this is like a natural high, yeah. right? You know, yeah. I'm doing something I love, I'm DJing. Now I'm also putting deals together for friends looking to buy houses. Yeah. And I was like, how can I capture this and make this a lifestyle? Yeah, yeah. You know? and, that, and that goes into what I wanted to say. So your first year, 2012, do you remember how many homes you sold that year? Um, I wanna say it was probably maybe like 17 to 20. But okay, but like, for your first if that, year, because though, that's... there's something called circle of excellence, right? right? So to qualify for that, and I did, I qualified for bronze that year. Okay. So I think you need at least a certain amount. I don't know if it's it's 12 to 15. Yeah. So it was at least enough to qualify for that that bronze level. Yeah. So. But even for your first year, though, to be able to number one qualify for that, but regardless of that award, like to right. be able to sell that many homes for your first year, right. you know, because me going into it. I dealt with the same struggles I think that you did, and then I, I took your advice as far as reaching out to the people and letting them know, you know, what I'm kind of getting into. 
Um, and I just realized that it was a process and it wasn't going to happen overnight or right. even the first six months or, or even for me the first year really. Um, but that's crazy to hear that you did that amount, that amount of business. I mean, actually it's not crazy, but it's just, it's just, it, it yeah, but don't forget, I, I, I service the area that I grew up in and I think okay. this is something right. I told you about, which yeah. was a huge benefit for me. Yeah. Right. So it's not like I implanted myself into Bridgewater right? and I'm like, all right, let me go meet as many people as I can. Hopefully they trust me enough to let me help with the process. Yeah. So I'm reaching out to friends that I've known since I'm a kid. Right. Their friends, their families, their parents, their yeah. cousins. It's like, it's a familiar face who, and I know the area. Yeah. So that was an easy switch. For, for me, did you deal with any, any, not even pushback, but you know, I look back on it and I used to feel a certain way. Like if, if I got into real estate, I told everybody. And then next thing you know, like I saw, you know, a friend or some like an acquaintance, you know, buy a house or close on their house. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm a, I'm an agent. Why would you use me? <laughs> like, was there, did you, in the beginning, at least, did you feel that way at all? Or for me looking back on it, I understood because I'm like, all right, I literally just announced that I just got into real estate. So right. maybe I wouldn't have been the person to trust with yeah. that purchase at that time, obviously. Correct. Correct. You know? No, I think so. I think in, in any any business, really, especially any type of sales business, there's there's almost more failure than success. Right. And I think that kind of shapes who you are. You learn and you grow from it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah of course. I, to I totally have been in positions where I'm like, wait a minute. You, you know I'm a realtor. You were just asking me to send you some houses. Right. Why are you posting on Facebook that you just bought a house <laughs> with this guy I've never even heard of? Right, right. Yeah. So you learn a lot about people, yeah. you know, but but ultimately you just you just don't give up. You yeah. Know? You just you stay persistent. You keep trying to be that obvious choice. Yeah, yeah. No, and I mean that's something that I've I've stuck with for a long time. Like that those those little things that that just paid dividends over the years of me thinking back to those conversations that we had and just makes right. it makes a lot more sense in those times of failure to be like, All right, I I more so than anything, I understand what I did wrong here. Let me correct it so I don't do the same well, thing. Well, I think that's important. You find yeah. out, you know, even on a listing appointment, you yeah. know, you, you don't hear back from the seller and then you right. see it hit the market. Right. And you're like, wait a minute. Like, we had this great conversation. Right, right. But yet you don't even give me the, the courtesy of letting me know what happened. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you know, you almost want to reach back and say, look, I appreciate the opportunity. You know, I'm glad you gave me a chance to do it. I see you hired someone else. That agent's great, too. Right. Can you give me a little bit of feedback of why we couldn't make this work between us? Yeah. You take that and you grow from it. Yeah. So. And that was even something, too, that I had here as far as, like, not even when you first started, but going into maybe even currently, if you have if you have situations when you go on those listing appointments that are either, I don't want to say, like, nightmare stories because you probably don't deal with too many of those, but those times where you thought it was a done deal. And then to your point, like you said, then you either don't hear back or it gets listed or whatever it is. But I'm sure as you've, as you've, as you've established yourself as that obvious choice, I'm sure maybe those were, were more happening in the beginning of your career to where. Yeah, I think, I think it's all about kind of finding yourself and your role and, and who you are comfortably. Yeah. You know, like in sales or really any type of business, you want to to see how quickly you can adjust to the person in front of you. Right. Right. Like we both have that DJing sales background, right? We right. meet a bride and groom. We see the type of people they are within the first two minutes and you yeah. have to adjust to get on their level. Yeah. Right. You become friends within the first five minutes and then the rest of that appointment should hopefully be pretty, pretty convenient because you're just talking to a friend at that point. Yeah. And being able to adapt to their situation helps them feel more comfortable with you as well. Yeah. But yeah, there's been situations where I felt totally out of place with some of these sellers and I'm struggling to find a way, like what can I put out there to connect us so they could put their guard down right. and stop looking at me as like this scumbag sales guy. Yeah, yeah. Right, like I'm here to, to help you guys get to the next level. Like you called me. Yeah. You know, so. That's a, that's a good point too, because I, I didn't even think, of, well, that that a seller is going to have that guard up because a, a lot of the times it may be the first three agents that came in just had their sales hat on and they were just basically just trying right. to showcase everything salesy wise as far as the process of selling your home rather than going the approach that you said as far as more so trying to develop that connection and to develop that trust ahead of time so they could let their guards down to be like okay now let's actually have a conversation as far as what we can right. we can do here yeah and everybody's different everyone yeah. has their own strategies and their own you know persona and it's just a matter of finding that connection with you and who you're sitting in front of yeah, yeah. no definitely you know was there a time or can you can you remember where you number one like just saw a, a, a your your confidence become developed within real estate and then also like where you finally thought to yourself like 
I, I can do that. Like I can basically not only make a career out of this, but I can also just completely um, take over in a sense, as far as this, this market and, and, and within like this business. Yeah. I think as, when you gain more and more knowledge and you, you, you truly believe in your product, I feel like that's a big part of anybody's success, right? Yeah. Like when you're, when you don't have to fake it anymore, right? Like when you could talk the talk, when you could talk about facts and strategies and you, you're genuinely believing what you're talking about, yeah. that comes across, you know, as authentic yeah. to whoever you're, whoever you're meeting with, whether, whether it's a buyer or a seller. And then ultimately they, they, they feel that from you. Yeah. You know, I think like for me in the beginning and probably where I was, was struggling was that I was trying to like sell a story and then eventually I was selling like my own story and like I was selling my own experiences and I was mm -hmm. selling my own, you know, issues that came up. So like when they were asking questions, I was able to like put myself into like that first person point of view to say, oh yeah, I dealt with something like that. Here's how I kind of handled that mm -hmm. instead of like, kind of like going off into like, well, you know, what we could do is we can do this and that. It was more so make establishing the fact like I, I I've handled this like so yeah. don't even worry about that that's something that I've taken care of I've mm -hmm. I've already experienced so I have a little bit more knowledge yeah. in that field you know right. yeah I mean it's the the customer wants to see how does this value me right, right. they're kind of like well what are you going to do for me yeah but when you've had those experiences and you could speak to it through the experience it makes them more comfortable to choose you and work with you yeah 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 um, just to get like an idea, um, cause right now we are in mid March, but mm -hmm. as far as like production, as far as what you have going on right now, because I know, I, I know for me with the amount of deals, with the amount of listings, with the amount of buyers, what is, what is an average, uh, productivity right now looking like, but the things that are pending with, with your, your listings, just because I always think to myself, how you do what you do, <laughs> right. uh, just being just an individual, basically. Yeah, so I mean, I'll be honest with you, and I'm, maybe I'm just different um, in the way I approach my business. I've never been the type to really look too much into stats. Like, you know, I don't set a goal for myself, yeah. whereas, oh, you know, I have to make this many calls per day. I hope I have to sell this many homes per month. Right. I kind of just wake up, do my thing as, as good as I can each day. Yeah. And then at the end of the year, I kind of say, all right, where did I fall? Right. You know, so I don't really, I don't really know where I'm at. You know, each yeah. month, each day, with with things like that. So you know, I know I'm having you know a pretty good year so far. Yeah. But I can't tell you oh, I've done 30 homes, 40 homes, and yeah. 10 pending, 20 pending. I'm really not sure. Like every day, I wake up like, what can I do next? You know, yeah. to better myself, to help clients, and just you know, just everything I did yesterday, it kind of resets. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I think that's the gift and the curse, right? No, no, for sure. And then like for you, like when you do try to analyze towards the end of the year, has there ever been a time um, of things that you have done within that year that stuck out to you? Like, oh, wow, like this was what really um, was like a key pivotal point in my success this year or this worked against me. Was there anything that ever really, again, just like, stu like stood out to you as far as being like a key ingredient to that success? Um, you know, I think at one point I remember like when Zillow was, you know, a little bit more popular and you, you'd see like, oh, how many homes sold in the past 12 months? And, right. you know, I finally hit that like 100 sales in the last 12 months. I was like, damn. I was like, I always like when I first started, I would look at teams that were like, you know, 95 homes in a, in a year. I'm like, damn, that's a lot. Right, right. You know, and yeah, then yeah. all of a sudden, like one year, I think it may have been like 2017 or 2018. I, I refreshed Zillow on my profile and I'm like, damn, I hit 100 homes in the last 12 months. I was right. like, you know, maybe I could be relevant, you know, in, yeah, this, yeah, in this yeah. whole space of real estate. Right. You know, so that was kind of like, that's great, but how do I now maintain that? Right. You know, and, yeah. and that's the thing. Like, you close a $2 million deal, the next day you wake up, you don't have that anymore. Right. What are you doing today? Yeah. You know, at what point is it like, when can I enjoy what I've built and, and actually balance it? Yeah. That's the struggle. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I think for me, there was a point where I think it was like the second or third, probably the second year in, in real estate where I was doing an open house for my listing. Um, I had a buyer come in that wanted to place an offer on the listing and then wanted to also sell their home. And then within that buyer, they, they referred me to their parents whose home I was going to sell. And then from those parents, they referred me to like an, another person. And like within one day, I had like six leads. And then I remember feeling like, that, like you said, like that high almost of right. being like, oh my goodness, like I could really 
like do something like this yeah. and I can I can sustain this. And then I did the the thing that you're not supposed to do. And then I just wasn't focusing on continuing to get clients, continuing to grow business, you know, having somebody else in an open house just because I was trying to go out and do showings. Mm -hmm. And I just realized that it, it takes a lot to keep things maintained and it just to be able to maintain the, the, the level, number one, the level of business and then right. the amount of work that goes into keeping everything going, right. you know, along the way. It's tough to keep everybody happy. Yes. Right. Yeah, you yeah. want to provide that that same exceptional level of service right. at all times. And that becomes a challenge when you start spreading it out over, yeah. you know, 20 to 30 clients at a time. Yeah, for sure. But there's nothing better than being that family's realtor. Right. Right. You sell the kids the home and they trust you enough to refer the parents and the uncles. <laughs> right. And right. then you're just that go to. Yeah. And yeah. that that to me is a, something I don't take you know, for granted, you know, you earn that, you sustain that and you, you prove why you're that choice for that family. Yeah. And that's, that's a natural high right there. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And then even talking about that, as far as you, you always want to be able to keep everybody happy. Um, you obviously you're married, you got two kids. So what is, how is the work life balance situation? And so <laughs> <laughs> funny you ask, um, <laughs> that's something that I try to work on every day. Yeah. Cause you know, ultimately, when we look back at what did we really do, what 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 defines right. success, right? Right. Is it the money? Is it keeping your wife happy? Is it keeping your kids happy? Is it being present? All of that need you need to balance all of that together. Yeah. And there's no direct way to do that other than trial and error. Right. Right. Like I don't sit in an office per se. Yeah. Right. So like anytime I'm not on appointments. I'm home, yeah. right? Because I want to be home. I want to be there to help my wife with anything around the house. I want to mm -hmm. be present for my kids. But although I'm home, my phone is my office. Right. So there are times where, yes, I, I, I'm staring at my phone and my daughter's screaming at me, daddy, look at this. My yeah, son's yeah. doing the same. And you feel kind of guilty, but like right. you try to be the best realtor, the best dad, yeah. the best husband. Like, you know, you just want to do it all. And it, it's not easy. Yeah. But I try every day, and I'm sure you do the same. Yeah, yeah, no, because that's that's obviously the one, probably the biggest struggle, and especially then with like the 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 baby and and these things that you want to be present for, and like that's another word too. Like even going from last year into this year, like that was my my goal was like I want to be more present, not only in my family's life, but then also too, you know, for the people that I'm working with. So when I am in these appointments or I, or I am at these showings, I'm not thinking about the next buyer that I have to go meet or the next, you know, listing appointment. I'm more so like, hey, let's enjoy this. Let's, you know, talk about this. Let me get to know what you guys really are looking for. So then this way, you know, I'm I'm better, better versed in the next amount of showings that we have. And, you know, I can like, oh, you know, remember when we talked about this that you didn't like. So this one over here has that same idea. Right. Right. So that being present is just tough because like you said, you know, I learned, and I think that you even talked to me about this, is that the second that you answer a call at seven o'clock in the morning, you're now starting work at seven o'clock in the morning. Right. Or you answer an email at 11.30, and then these people are like, oh, okay, so, you know. It's he's, acceptable. He, yeah, yeah. He, I, could, I could email him at 11.40, maybe he'll still answer. Right. Um, so it's tough because <clears throat> you, you want to have that cutoff, yeah. but it's, it's not like a, you know, and nothing against nine to fives, but it's not like at five o'clock, it's like, I'm out the door. Right. I don't have to think about work. Right. A lot of the times five o'clock when everybody else gets off of work, they're hitting we you start. up like, Hey, yeah. where are we at? I want to do this. I want to <laughs> do that. So exactly. Yeah. That, that balance is definitely a struggle for me. And like you said, I think that trial and error is probably the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. You do the, we do the best we can, yeah. right? Nothing's black and white. We don't right. clock out. We're always kind of on call, Yeah. you know, and time is the one thing that we'll never get back. Yeah. So you have to use it as wise as possible. Yeah. So, Do you have anything as far as like a night or morning time, let's say like routine to where like, is is there a cutoff for you per se to where it's like, okay, my wife might kill me if I don't <laughs> we put the phone down at a certain time or in the morning to right. be able to at least get your mind right for whatever the day is going to be. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm not going to lie. We're watching Netflix and I'm glancing over to my phone and, right, you know, right. trying to sneak like maybe at, like I got to go get some, uh, some more ice cream. <laughs> Let me pop up right back to a yeah, text. Yeah. Um, as far my phone's always on, yeah. you know, I don't, I'm not always able to answer the calls. I usually hit people back with a text, like, you know, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm either in appointments or I can only text at this moment. And they usually hit me back like that. So yeah. it's, it's communication where I don't have to, you know, walk out of the room and, and leave what I'm doing and then take a phone call. Right. It's more like a lot of these, these calls can be answered with a quick text message, yeah. it's, depending on who it is. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I try to do my best just to kind of balance who's calling me and what the situation is. Right. And, you know, but 
uh, again, as far as like a, a routine, I, I never have my phone off. Yeah. I know you, I saw you put something out where you try to like, you know, you don't look at social media right. until a certain time of the day. And, yeah. You know, again, it's looking at it is one thing, but then engaging in it is another. Right. So I think, it, you know, to glance at it versus let me respond to all these people before 730, before I brush my teeth, right. it's not healthy. Yeah. yeah. Right. You want to get, take care of yourself first, take care of your body and your health first. Get yourself yeah. in the mindset to now attack the day. Right. Yeah. And I've even learned too, like once I've started at least establishing, like if people, if people will e- email, not, not really just text messaging, if, if people text me before, let's say like 830, mm-hmm. I realize that like they almost like uh, respect and appreciate where it's like, hey, you know, I was d- getting a couple of things done and then to go in a conversation. Because just like you said, a lot of the times yeah. it's going to be a quick response right. back or right. it's going to be a quick uh, something that won't, you know, uh, take a phone call. It'll just be one or two text messages back and forth. And then they start to establish like, okay, like I understand that I, cause every, I feel like every person wants to feel like you're probably their main priority. Like you're their only client, but then they start to realize like there's other thing, there's other people that are, are reaching right. out about the same thing. Right. And I'm, I'm kind of grateful and blessed to have most of my clients are almost friends first. Yeah where it's not like somebody sees me off of a Zillow lead or, or calls me because of a billboard, right. you know, and they don't respect me as a person. So a lot of my clients look at me first as, you know, a family guy with kids and a wife. Right. Let's be mindful of that before we reach out at all hours and expect an immediate response. Yeah. So I think it, it comes with setting the tone, but also choosing the right clients to work with too. You have to be selective because some people just, they just don't care. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's a good point, too. And um, I don't know if, if we if you don't want to go into this, we can always cut this out. But <laughs> has there been a time where you I never went. Someone told me a while ago uh, as far as like firing a client. Mm-hmm. And I and I thought like that idea was like Crazy. insane. Crazy. I'm like, fine, I'm like, yeah. what? Right. But then as I started working <laughs> with some people, I was like, OK, it makes a little bit of sense on certain things. And like everyone that I've worked with has been amazing. But it's like I've also dealt. I've, I've, I've encountered people that wound up not becoming a client, a client of mine and realizing like I was not a good fit for these people regardless. Of course, of course. Um, Has that ever happened on your end to where it's like these people just may not be a, a good fit in the sense of like how I operate my business? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I don't think it was like, you know, more of like, hey, listen, we can't work together anymore. Right. But it's more of like, I'm here to educate you on the the. The, the reality of this market yeah. today at the time. Right. You know, here's what's going on. If you want to see a bunch of houses, you know, I'll weed out the ones that aren't going to work for you. I'll do my thing for you. But if you're just not realistic with, with how things are looking, it's going to be tough for us to work together. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there, there hasn't been anything that really jumps out at me where I, I made a stance, like, don't call me again. Right, right. You know, it's more, you know, out of respect. Listen, you know, we're not going anywhere right yeah. now. You're thinking this. The reality is this. Right. All I could do is set the proper expectation. Yeah. And if they're not into that, maybe it's just not the right time for them to buy or sell. Yeah. So I've had those over the years, but it's always been professionally handled and yeah. friendly. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know. And like even what you just mentioned too, just as far as letting people know and and um, giving some information as far as like the market and stuff. I know obviously I'm I'm curious on how you manage the shift from like, you know, like that 2020 period Mm -hmm. and then how you're managing like the shift now, because I just, I feel like it's, it's in like the the real estate world, depending on who you talk to, it it develops like this negative undertone to where it's Mm like, oh my goodness, you know, like the market right now is this and that. And it's like, I hope that like those agents aren't having the same conversations with the people that are getting into <laughs> trying to buy a home right now because it's just such a good defeating conversation. Yeah. Um, but on your end, I don't know, like how, how has it been? How have you been managing that shift from, you know, like, like let's call it like the COVID times, like runs, you know, 2020 hit. And then now that things are obviously mm-hmm. shifting a little bit as well, too. Yeah. I mean, obviously that 2020 mark that, you know, that March, April, we're like, are we ever going to sell a house again? Right. I'm dusting off my DJ equipment, <laughs> but am, am I going to DJ a wedding? ever again. <laughs> right, no one right. knew what was going on. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so at that time, you know, we were all just doing what we can to kind of stay positive, keep the right mindset. You know, social media for all of us is a huge factor in what we do. Right. You know, I was putting out those DJing videos and just DJing for the crowd that was sitting home because they couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but at that point, I'm still out there just just putting good vibes out and, yeah. you know, showing showing face and just guys, we're here. You know, we're all I hate to say the cliche, but we're in this together. Everybody right. kept using that. Yeah. You know, and, it, and it's true. I think we all kind of rallied around each other when that kind of broke, you know, in 2021, <clears throat> excuse me, it, 
the market just exploded. Right. Rates were two and a half. It's like, yeah. you know, it was just, it wasn't even fair. Yeah. The prices went up 200 grand, but you're basically borrowing money for free from the bank. Right, right. So it kind of justified. Now it's a challenge because yeah. the rates are pushing seven, mm-hmm. but the prices have not fallen. Right. Right. So I have clients that, you know, six months ago, just wait, we'll keep looking, wait till the market crashes. Right. You know, that 800K house is going to be 650. Yeah, We're going to yeah. jump on it. They haven't jumped anywhere. Right. They're still at home on Zillow, just waiting for something to change, <laughs> sending me articles of yeah, like, yeah. It's, go- it's coming. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know if it is. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, and people need to move on. They need, people need to buy homes for whatever reason. Right. You know, so I'm never at that, you know, that mindset where it's just going to fall apart. Yeah. You know, and I think, you know, life has to go on. And, and thankfully, a lot of my clients are educated enough to realize I'm not going to sit around and wait, throw money into a rental and, and wasting all that money. Yeah. So it's, you know, the, the, I guess the phrase from lenders lately has been date the, marry the house, date the rate. Yeah, yeah. Right? Get the house you want. You right. could always refinance. And it's true. I yeah. mean, ultimately, you'll have no regrets. You get where you want to be, and then you could always fix the financing later. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, too, like you just said, like the educational aspect of it is important because I, I have it to where maybe like some of like the buyers like that I've worked with have I don't know if guilt is the right word or just like that, almost like that they feel like they missed out on like that huge opportunity. And then those conversations are a little bit more difficult because they're already at like a a low and they're like, well, we are never going to be able to get this again. We're never, and trying to just get them to be a little bit more realistic and a little bit more present with, with where it's like, we can't really talk about that because that's, you know, not a reality anymore. Here's what the reality is. And like, let's just try to formulate a plan with, with what we have in front of us right now that's going to work best for you. Yeah. I think it's all about open communication, right? You set the, when you meet a new buyer, you set the precedent. Yep. Make sure they go through their numbers with the lender so they're not thrown off when they fall in love with a home and then they feel, you know, they hear the monthly payments and they're like, wait, I, I had no idea. Right. So I think people, now that the rates have kind of been up on the higher side for the last, you know, six months or so, maybe more, I think people are kind of wrapping their heads around it, knowing this is the reality now. If I want to do something and, and make a move, this is what I, got, I have to deal with. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. You know. With um, I, I mean, I feel like you're normally right on time with, with a lot of things that go on and like in and like social media wise like you said like during like the covid times and they just getting on djing and stuff and like that was like a lot of fun i know that you've been a little bit more active on like you know like uh tiktok and and and, and instagram is there is there things that you've added into like that social media element that you have seen um is it is it more so for people to see like that fun side of you just to be like okay I'm not just this guy over here selling homes like I'm actually I got a personality I have a fun side and is there anything from that that you've gotten you know a, a, a good amount of feedback on that makes you continue to keep doing it Yeah I think that's exactly what it is you know in the beginning when I first started selling and you know on the regular I would post just listed you know just sold and under contract and I'm thinking to myself man these people are going to just start unfollowing me how <laughs> right, boring right. is this content right, I have to right. do something to just switch it up yeah and then I'm like you know what I think people understand I'm a realtor now yeah I don't have to keep throwing that in their face like I'm way more than just that yeah so here's a video that has nothing to do with me being a realtor right it's just who I am right and I feel like you know, in, in our industry and, and most industries, people are going to want to work with you for you. Yeah. Not whatever. You could sell anything. Right. No matter what you're selling, you come first. Yeah. Right. Like you could all of a sudden become a car salesman, a genuine car salesman. Yeah. Yeah. And all your friends are going to say, you know what? I don't care what Corey has. I trust him. Yeah. I know he's going to do right by me. Yeah. So show who you are. You're not this slime, you know, this slime ball sales guy. Right. Just putting pitches out there to just try to win people over. Yeah. Like, no, I'm just having a good time helping people along the way. Yeah. And then everybody's winning. Yeah. And it, some of them are creative and, and it's entertainment. 100%. So social yeah. media has been, been everything for me. I started my business from social media. Yeah. Yeah. And I... Right? I, I took that that yeah. uh, <laughs> that advice that you did. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you want to go into what you did because I basically did the exact. Well, same thing. so first of all, I don't know how much your audience even knows about you and your come up because mm-hmm. you're humble enough not to really talk about yourself. It's about other people all the time. <laughs> right, right. But this guy, so I met Corey while we were DJing. Right, I'm I'm doing a hundred weddings a year. That was my focus. Real estate really wasn't even on my radar, or it was a little bit, but. This guy, Corey, comes along and, and right away, I'm like, this guy's different, man. <laughs> like these production guys that set up the lights, right? They just, they don't really, it's a thankless job. No one's looking at you. No one's talking to you. 
you're setting up the equipment, you're running lights for the dance floor. I would glance back at Corey. Normally the guys are on their phone. This dude was just laser focused <laughs> on the dance floor, what I'm doing. I could tell his mind was racing. Like, what is Jay doing? What can I do to, to maybe take what he does that works, make it my own? And I remember having this convo with you like, man, you're going to be something. I was yeah, like, yeah. you're just different. Yeah. So for Corey's audience, this dude is going to be a problem, and he already is. So congrats to you I appreciate on that, your man. success and, yeah. and staying who you are. You've been genuine from the beginning, Yeah. right? And I knew it right away. And the, you called me. I think you were talking about doing mortgages at one point. I was, yeah. Did you get into mortgages? I, I, I kind of like dipped in a little bit. And um, I went through a, a process to realize that it just, it, it didn't fit well with me. So you took, you took your skill set, your confidence, your personality, and you made it work for you. Right, right. Right. And I think that's from day one, I knew that you had that in you. From DJing to being an MC to then meeting with strangers, them trusting you to hire you to sell their home. Yeah. I mean, you come a long way. Yeah, no, so. I, I appreciate that. And I remember the first time when I got into um, Elite Sound, shout out to Johnny Buds. Johnny Buds. Um, I, I was, our, our, the, my very, very first wedding was with you at um, Maritime Park. Okay. And yes. I think it was a Sunday wedding. Yep. And I think you and Steve, shout out to Steve, I think you guys were saying like, oh, like Sunday fun day, like, you know, these are one of those things where you don't really know what you're gonna get. It's the end of the weekend type of thing. It's my first day. So mm -hmm. how, how clueless I was, I actually showed up to the office in a full suit, ready to go. Like <laughs> Steve didn't even tell me, hey, like just so you know, wear some like, you know, clothes so you don't have to sweat. be sweating. Yeah. I literally showed up. He's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm, I'm ready to go. Like, let's, let's go. He's like, well, we got to take all this equipment in. He's like, you're going to be getting sweaty. Did you bring anything else? So you rip your dress pants, man. Seriously. You better fall yeah, back. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we, we got everything set up. And then I remember the first half of the wedding, like, you know, just was, you were kind of feeling out the crowd and stuff. And again, my first time, experiencing a wedding from like behind the scenes and then it was right after dinner I remember you were saying something to Steve and I remember you were like you know what like I'm, I'm over this and you saying that in the sense of where you're over not having these people just like having like the, the best Sunday of their life and I remember you just started playing some music you started off with like I think it was like a reggaeton set mm. and on a Sunday evening I mean, these people didn't stop dancing for like that second half of the wedding one time. And like, I probably, that's where I was so focused in because I went in there and thinking like, I could DJ a wedding. Like I've, I've done clubs and stuff before. I can, I can maybe figure out how to do this. And then I left there. I was like, I really need to do some homework on how to DJ a wedding. Because <laughs> if I was in that position, people, I mean, I, I would have had them sitting the entire time as well too. So Right, I, but even that translates to what you're doing now, what I'm doing now, right? Yeah. It's not always gonna be a sunny day. Right. Right? How do you adjust when there's yeah. adversity, when yeah. things aren't going to your script as you thought it would when you meet a new client? Right. What are you gonna do different to capture them in and put it to, you know, get everything back on track? Yeah. So that's the same thing as DJing a wedding, we're constantly looking up at the crowd, making adjustments in what's working, what's not. Yeah. It's the same thing when you're working with a new client. Right. You know, you have to shift when their mindset shifts. Yeah. So I think that's just a skill that, you know, we both kind of picked up along the way yeah. in the wedding business. Right. So, no, definitely. And yeah. I think too, like for you, obviously having that confidence to be like, okay, I know that I can take some risks here or I can try and like do something that may not be like my normal four hour wedding plan. Um, because something needs to be different. There needs right. to be an adjustment to what's been going on here. Right and it now. all comes with confidence, yeah. experience and confidence. Exactly. And that translates to any, anything that you get into. 100%. Because you've seen, you've been there before. You yeah. know what's gonna happen. Yeah. And you're confident enough to take that risk. Yeah. So. No, definitely. Yeah. Um, as far as you, I only got a, a little bit more left. As far as you, yeah. you go, because again, I consider you a mentor. Um, I hope you don't mind. I've been calling you my mentor since I started real estate. So <laughs> um, I- I, I, I was thinking, I'm like, do you have, not, not even like a mentor, but do you have someone who you've looked at uh, what they've done or you talk to to be like, okay, let me, not even someone to hold you accountable, but someone to kind of just give you those like little pep talks for those times where you've been that person on my end to give me those types of pep talks. So, I mean, when I first started, you know, I didn't have anybody really that, you know, said, here, come with me, let me show you the ropes and, yeah. you know, I'll take you under my wing and here's how you talk to people. So I kind of went on YouTube and I'm just Googling like, you know, realtors in action, like showing a home, like what is that like? I came across a gentleman, Tom Ferry, mm -hmm. which probably anybody in the real estate industry now knows who that is. Right. 
And I must have watched probably three to 400 of his videos. Yeah. You know, and they were just, they just captured my mindset, my attention. And I was like, wow, this guy gets it. Yeah. You know, and I would just take everything he would say and try to like incorporate that to, to who I am. Yeah. Right. And he always talked about, and I talked to you about this, be the obvious choice. Mm -hmm. We've said that many times. Right. Right. What are you going to do for your marketplace for them to say, I'm buying a house. Oh, you're working with Jay, right? Oh, you're working with Corey, right? Like right. it's understood. Yeah. Like how do you get yourself to that level? Yeah. And, you know, now, you know, 10, 11 years later, still looking at his videos and I had right. the opportunity to meet him in person finally, like last year, exchanged yeah, yeah. Instagrams. Now he's liking my statuses, messaging yeah, yeah. me. It's surreal, you know, but he was the he was the guy that really, and it's a YouTube video, but that was enough for me to say, let me figure out how to make this my own. Yeah. So he would be the guy that comes to mind. Although yeah. there's a there's a whole bunch of great agents around here. No, no, of course. Even in my Remax office here, there's people that I learn from every day. Yeah. But he's the one that stands out because I watched 400 of his videos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I think that goes to show too, just the level that you're at to where you just went into just just Googling and like YouTubing videos to be able to say, okay, like I want to do this. So, I, you know, I'm going, I don't know anything about this. So, so let me just teach myself and yeah. teach myself the ways of, of, of what this guy who's doing it, who's successful, and then implement my own style into it. Right. And I came originally, I was with Keller Williams, which is another incredible company right, yeah. right here in, in Morganville. Mm -hmm. And they were, at the time, they were big on, you know, here's objection scripts, you know, here's scripts when you're on the phone or at someone's door. And for me, that that never really clicked. Yeah. Like I'm not a script guy. Right. I'm more of, I'm, I'm just keeping it real. Like yeah. this is an authentic how I feel. And being guy. genuine. Exactly. I'm speaking my mind. And right. that, you know, along with some of the things I learned from Tom, Yeah. W w between those two things, I was able to get in my, in my comfort zone and yeah. be, you know, who I am. So I feel like for any, for any young agent, you know, it's all about authenticity. Right. Don't try to be something that you're not. You know, you're going to get beat up in this business. Yeah. Never get too high and never get too low. Yeah. Right. I feel like that's something I wish I knew before I took this crazy ride of real estate. For sure. Because yeah. you could be on top of the world on a Friday night and by Saturday, 10 a.m., you feel like you're not even worthy of eating <laughs> yeah. breakfast that morning. It it's, goes quick. It's so crazy. You said that. I forget what what um, I forget what podcast I was listening to, but but someone said uh, about like you know being on the top of like Mount Everest just isn't sustainable because of like the air quality up there. Mainly like take, making a metaphor to where it's like you can only be at that that top top pinnacle level so long. You got to kind of find like this like cruising altitude in the sense to where it's like you still feel high but it's more controllable and you know you, you'll get run into some turbulence you'll do this you'll do that because that's one of my biggest things it's yeah. just to your point is that i'll go into a weekend with with three new listings four accepted offers new buyers this and this and then by sunday you know those two you know those two deals fell through whatever else yeah. happened and i'm just like yeah. i can't do this anymore i'm done <laughs> like, i'm going back to djing <laughs> I'm, I'm done yeah. with it you know it's real i mean that's that's what we go through so yeah. like when i hit a huge deal I, i'm not celebrating until the closing day right because anything could happen right you know and and even the lows it's like at this moment i feel like so empty right like a huge punch to the gut right and then you know you get a call later hey jay we you know we, we'd love for you to come over and discuss pricing we're thinking of listing right all of a sudden you get your pet back you <laughs> yeah, know you're yeah, like all right yeah. cool this isn't so bad yeah you know but ultimately you're right you got to stay at that middle ground that cruising altitude yeah don't get too low and don't get too high. Yeah, no, definitely. Right. And business, I, business will, it, it'll put you where you need to be quick. No, it'll humble you. And that's the reason yeah. too, why a lot of the times, like just to like humble myself, I'll, I'll check in with you to be, when I am feeling like that high, I'm like, oh man, I'm, I'm killing it right now. Right. And then I'll, in my head, I'm like, let me call Jay real quick just to <laughs> know what he's doing, just so I could bring myself back down and, no. and just be more realistic. But I also realized too, like in those those low moments is that I try not to, to your, to your point, like even like at the closing, I try to not to celebrate too much because I know that just to your point, now you wake up and, you know, back to square one of, of not having that, that deal going, right. but then also to like validate like, okay, that was like a lot of hard work. Like these people, mm -hmm. you know, we, we got them like the, the home of their dreams. They're going to, they're so happy. And just like the kind of, of, of 
chase that feeling more so than chasing right. like a paycheck or something like that because yeah. that's gotten me nowhere trying to trying Listen, to chase money. You, if you chase your client's best interest, you'll be yeah. on the top of your game. Yeah, people who chase money should not be in this business. Yeah, because that money will it comes and it goes. Right, right. But if you're genuine to who you are, your clients see that, and you really want to help, the money will follow. Yeah, and you know I've over a decade of doing this now, and that's that's my mindset. Yeah, you know, and I'm the, I'm the type to take a few steps back if it's gonna help my client go forward, yeah, right? And you could talk to and a bunch of my clients. There are times where I'm like, guys, don't make this offer. Right. Don't buy this house, yeah. here's why, yeah. right? I'm not in it, just like I know I can get the deal, but that's not what we wanna do, Yeah. right? And here's why. And some, some buyers need that, that humbling too. Like, yeah. you, you know, you, you come into your first house and it, you think it's everything you want, right. but meanwhile, I'm going down to the basement and the walls are bowing. <laughs> There's horizontal cracks everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I see mold, I see this. I'm like, nothing that can't be fixed, but right. you don't want that on your mark. Right. And now when you go to sell it, you're gonna have to deal with structural engineers and yeah, carbon yeah, straps yeah. and all this stuff. So, <laughs> you know, I make sure, and I don't just say, don't buy this house, but right. I say, guys, look at this. Make sure you factor all these things in Definitely. because I want to make sure you guys make the right decision yeah. and they appreciate that. And yeah. if it's coming from a genuine place, then more power to you and to any other agent even listening to this. Yeah. Yeah. I think, like you said, I think having their best interest, it, it, it should go without saying, but I think that that is really what has changed my business around was um, look, like, don't get me wrong. Like that first, those first two closings that I had and I saw the paycheck, I was like, <laughs> holy crap, like this is absolutely insane. Yeah. But then also too, being able to really focus on what, what my, my buyers are looking for and, and, uh, and strategies for my sellers and just not becoming like a, a, a yes man to where they're like, oh, listen, I want to, I want to list it at, at X amount. And knowing that that may be detrimental to their end goal, and not having just like that confidence and be like, oh, wait, listen, like that might not be the best scenario for you. And here's why. Right. And like, if that's something to where like they look at it like, well, so and so will list it for this price. It's like, well, if, that, if it comes down to that, then like rightfully so, do you know, do what works best for you. But I'm just trying to let you know what I feel like is going to be your best scenario. In this yeah, case. you're providing the value that some sellers may or may not want. Yeah. Right. Some sellers want to hear or they, they get told what they want to hear. Right. But ultimately, you know, when you're on top of your game, you're going to set the proper expectation and yeah. you don't have to come in with the highest estimate, yeah, you yeah. know, for them to choose you. you, right. you they, they respect how real you are and your knowledge, right. which is why they'll ultimately choose you. Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. With all that then being said, what do you personally feel like is the hardest part of, of like the level of success that you've reached? And again, I know it's probably not the, the easiest thing to talk about, but what do you, what, what are the struggles that you see or that you come across or that you've had to deal with, with, now being, which I can hopefully say becoming the obvious choice in, in your community and in, in, in like the area that you're working in and, and specializing in. Yeah, I mean, so it, it's tough. There's pressure now at this point, right? Because it's, it's publicly known with the rankings that you put out. Right. You know, everyone kind of knows like, okay, anything less than number one for Jay is he, he's going backwards. Yeah. So like the struggle with, you know, do I really need that kind of pressure? Is it even worth it? Yeah. You know, to be like, OK, let me wake up, not enjoy, you know, kind of what I work so hard for with my family and, you know, with my wife and kids. And yeah. like, what am I doing this for? Like, right. I don't want to ever lose sight of that. Yeah. You know, I never want it to feel like I'm just chasing a social media post so I could say I got ranked number one again. Right. But like if you're not present for your family and you look back in 15 years with regrets, yeah. you know, did you win anything? Yeah, yeah. So that I struggle with, you know, every day. I mean, honestly, that's why I, I try to do my best to, to be present. And even when I am present, I can't shut my phone off in the middle of the day. Right. But my daughter's trying to put makeup on my face and yeah, like, yeah, I'm just yeah. trying to do it all. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, at this point it's, and I don't know really what to do with that. You know, I'm still working on that, you know, a decade later. Yeah just that balance, yeah. you know, and I'm very, I'm very open about that, you yeah. know, and I'm, I'm trying my best just to, to be the best at everything. Right. And it's ultimately, how do you do that? Yeah. You know, so that's the struggle. No, for sure. And like, just like the last thing to, to wrap it up, obviously, well, first and foremost, obviously, thanks for, for sitting and, and talking. Anytime, like, I've man. always, I always learn, learn stuff from chatting with you. I think that you're one of the people that I, I look at as obviously as like a mentor, but then also as just someone who 
is just an all around just just good dude. Like just as far as work ethic wise, as far as family life goes, with you being at the place that you're at and and you've probably developed great relationships like in the business. Like mm-hmm. do you feel like there is anything and I'm trying to word this the right way to not put you in a in a weird position, but like in in a in a place to where if you're dominating your your marketplace as as a listing agent, you're going to have a lot of people that are trying to be as nice to you as possible, basically. So, like, are you able to know the authentic relationships and the, and the people who are authentic when they're saying congratulations or so happy for you and not having like an alternate you know motive behind it? Like, right. I'm, I'm sure you're at a place to where do you feel like you can separate those those types of people and again i think you probably struggle with the same thing most most realtors do because ultimately we're the top of the food chain right right without us there's really no lenders there's no real estate attorneys no <laughs> right. title companies right right like so it, it's tough to say that anyone who reaches out to me is reaching out genuinely because they like me yeah, yeah. right if i if i say listen i you, you've been so nice reaching out for my business i decided to get out of the business you still want to meet for lunch mm, yeah, yeah. all of a sudden that invitation is canceled <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So like I have that sense in my mind that there's a lot of, you know, almost anybody who reaches out yeah. is looking to get, you know, my business, right. you know, and, and we have to give our business to somebody. Right. You know, and thankfully, a lot of the people that I work with, I've been working with, you know, from day one. Yeah. So I know even before I was selling 100 plus homes a year, they were showing me the the respect and the time of day. And those are the ones that I try to, you know, reward in the end yeah. with, with the referral business. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, if I took a cup of coffee with every lender that reached out to me, I'd have a bladder problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? I wouldn't be able to do it. So right, it's like, right. I'm just trying to, to to really balance all that out too. Yeah. But yeah, that, I mean, everybody who reaches out is ultimately looking to partner up. Yeah. But, you know, you don't get to the level that, that you're at and some of these top agents without having a strong team of vendors behind you. So why would I change? Yeah. That's kind of like my mindset. Like, all right, let me roll the dice with you when I've had success with somebody who's been there for me from day one. Definitely. Yeah. No, I I hear you hundred percent, man. Yeah. Um, that's all I got, dude. I'm, um, I'm super happy we're able to do this. I'm going to put all like your social media stuff like on it. So, um, if there's not anything else that you want to leave off with, um, yeah, this was, this was awesome. Man. No, this was great. Yeah. And it's been too long before we even did this. Yeah. Yeah. Done it sooner, but you know, and again, yeah. thank you for the opportunity for Corey's crowd. This, this guy I told you from day one, <laughs> it's going to be a problem, you know, and he's as genuine. I feel like that's why we connected. Yeah. Right. We both have the same mindset. Real talk, right? right? From day one, I looked at you different and watching you grow has been awesome. So yeah, keep doing same. what you're doing, man. Likewise, brother. Yep. I appreciate it, man. Awesome, dude.